Ez a kír, Titter. Ez kis kír. Good afternoon. Welcome to our Thursday Live. If you would know what links we go through to be here on a Thursday, um, yeah, you will just love us more. Um, I'm Nadine Fosler, better known as Mama Choco, and you are actually with me on a building site. We are busy renovating an Airbnb to make it beautiful. And I'm going to share some tips and tricks of paint techniques that we use in this space. And you will be part of this journey for the next few weeks. So actually at, at the entrance of the flat, I'm busy applying this technique, but I had to due to drying time of paint and seeing that I'm working at a coastal area, drying time just takes so much long, longer. So I had to prepare a wall here for you and then we'll take the next steps to the actual space where this, this technique um, will be applied. Welcome to wherever you are watching. Sit back, relax, enjoy. We are going to be creative together. Ask the questions if you have any. Um, either myself or the team on the other side of, of South Africa will assist and let's be creative together. I'm working on a wall space and I know that my wall has previously been painted with a PVA, an acrylic water-based paint. And due to the fact that there's an existing water-based paint on my existing walls, I can now just start being creative. If there was an enamel, a solvent-based, an oil-based paint on the walls, I would first have to apply a universal undercoat, allow a four-hour drying time, and then start with this step. My first step is with Stencil of Paris and what I'm going to do, and you, the, the vision will be more clear when we move to the entrance, is I want to create wall panelling with a wooden flat piece of wood in the centre of my wall and above the panelling I'm going to create texture but I want you to know exactly how I've done this. I'm going to use Stencil of Paris paste and this is our paste that is so versatile. Please make sure you like, subscribe and turn on your notifications on our YouTube channel because there are so many tips and tricks and nice creative ideas with this product. I'm going to use a trowel and a paint scraper. And the reason for the paint scraper is just to scrape some product out of my jar and remember all chocos products are eco-friendly non-toxic water-based so you can rinse this jar once you have used it up and reuse it and now i'm going to spread my paste on a plaster trowel and i'm going to for this technique move my paste downwards on my surface. So tip, I do want to create texture. I do want to create unevenness. Um, you will see later the reason for this. So thicker areas, thinner areas, don't be perfect with this. You don't want a flat blasted surface. And also the reason why I've selected this technique is the wall that I'm working on has cracks at the top of the wall and this is easier to fix than trying to plaster it perfectly. And this I will now do on the entire top half of my wall just so that you know the steps you don't need to see how i'm doing the entire wall as long as you know how to do that next step will be to allow for the stencil of paris to dry properly it sets rock hard so if you have done this um i'm actually not sure once it's dry how you're going to remove it but you will see it's beautiful beautiful texture 
Now this section has dried already. I'm just going to show this step so it makes sense. I have lots of walls to paint in this area, the flat that I'm busy renovating. So for the walls, I'm using Choco, um, Choco's wall paint. So the color that I'm working with is either Labels Light or Davet. Labels Light, you will see later, it's a beautiful neutral that just complements any other color. It's nice and warm, stunning color to use on wall areas. If there are walls or rooms with less light, Davet is a nice option, seeing that it's coastal and she wants some, some coastal vibes. So Davet is like an antique white. I'm going to use a Hamilton's paintbrush. No one will know that this is a Hamilton's paintbrush. You can see that it really works hot and it works hard and I can still use it. So that's why I love the Hamilton's brand so much. It really lasts forever. Um, wash immediately your paintbrushes with water. Once you are done painting, don't leave the paint to dry on them. And on my textured surface, I will now, the dry textured surface, I will now paint with velvet. Make sure you, you apply your masking tape to make sure that you have cut lines where you don't want the colors to touch. Um, I haven't done this. I just want the steps to make sense. Your presence and um, Dieter is assisting me with the renovations in the flat. We are now going to move to the actual wall where this technique is being applied. Okay, walk with me. No judgment. This is a building site. I we have removed the carpets. We're busy taking out everything in the bathrooms, walls, everything is going to be repainted. I just want to make sure that I don't leave anything behind that I'm going to need. Okay, let's go. So what we have done is we have actually removed the carpets in the rooms and we are using these carpets as drop sheets to make sure that we keep everything tidy, um, as tidy as it can work, mm -hmm. if that is possible. Okay, now you are here with me at the entrance. And I'm going to show the next technique. So on my walls, I have the stencil of Paris that has dried properly. You can see the texture, how stunning. The more texture, the better. I have applied two coats of the Davit in the wall paint. My paint has dried. And now I'm going to continue with the next step. I'm going to work with a color, Vinya Stone. So there's my paintbrush. So the color I'm using next is a choco paint color. Lovely also to work on walls, especially if you are going to do te paint techniques and you just need a lick of paint. Even a 250 mil in the Vinya Stone color would have been more than enough for this wall and the technique I'm going to apply to it. I am going to need a paintbrush and it doesn't need to be a new paintbrush. It's a paint technique. You can see it has worked hard. I have a paint tray. I have decanted some of the vineyard stone. You don't need much in the paint tray. And together with that, I'm going to need a damp mutton cloth. So you can see equipment that has been used. We're working hard. Okay, so mutton cloth. This is the size of my mutton cloth. It's the size of a pair of underpants. And it is damp. Tip. I'm folding my mutton cloth so that all the edges are folded away, nicely tucked onto the palm of my hand, and I flatten it with my free hand. I'm going to work on the step ladder. I'm going to try and position it 
as best possible so that everything makes sense. Let me turn it around. I'm going to put my paint at the top. Jericho. Now, in the past, we have done numerous um, tutorials on a dry brush technique, and this is exactly what I'm going to be using now. So it is a dry brush with paint evenly distributed on the edges, but I use my apron. You don't need to. You can see I have that one spot where I dry excess paint. And now what I'm going to do, my plaster work with a stencil of Paris was done in a downward movement. And I'm going to do the same with my dry brush technique. So I move my brush down. And you can see it's light movement, little paint. I do one. I can turn it around. And Dieter, is it nicely visible? Mm, yeah. Best camera work ever. Okay, Dieter says he does the best camera work ever. <laughs> At least that's one thing that he can't get full of dust when he stands <laughs> still and so. does some <laughs> camera work. Now I take my damp cloth. You can see the lines. And what I do with my damp cloth, very light pressure, I just wipe down. So what happens? There you can see the detail in the crevices. And rather start with too little than too much. You can always add a next coat should you want to add more. How stunning is that? At the top, I just wipe away. And this is actually therapy. And I'm going to do one more so that this, the technique and the step makes sense. Just dip the tips, the edge of the paintbrush in the paint. I remove excess on my paint tray. I even remove more on my apron, rather too dry than too wet. I drag it down on the texture from the top to the bottom. And I can go up again. Put down. I'm still working with the same cloth and I'm standing in the air. So um, exercise is a good thing, but you don't always need it. So if you can stand still in one place and just make life easier for yourself, why not? Can you see how beautiful this is? So it's a dry brush dragging washing technique. Oh, it's beautiful. And then if you want to be creative and just do certain areas maybe a little darker than others, you can brush more, you can brush less. Tip, always stand back once you have done something and just see if everything is perfect. I'm going to add the last color on this, this prachtig. Can you see how beautiful it is on the screen? Thank you, Dieter. Okay, this is so beautiful. Okay, last touch will be with David. And what I'm going to do with David, David is the color that we started painting with. On these walls, we have Levos light and on the walls behind Dieter. So the majority of the walls are painted in Levos light in the wall paint range. And then here we are working with David Vinya Stone. And now I'm going to repeat David here just to show 
with a lighter color how you can accentuate detail. So I'm just getting my gum vet. My used Hamilton's brush. Still the same rag. And I'm just going to brush. This is something I think that won't be that easy to see on the screen now, but if I take close-ups at the end, it will really be nicely visible. What the Gavit does, it just accentuates the areas where there is detail and darker shadows at the back. I can move direction. If you have applied too much, like I have done just there, damp cloth, light pressure, and you wipe away. Okay, so this is for the top section, the washing, the texture, um, and that's done. You don't need to apply anything afterwards. Once I am done, um, I will send a final picture. I am in back-to-back -back meetings the entire day tomorrow, which is a Friday, believe it or not. So sometime during the weekend, I'll get time to finish everything, and I'll send a beautiful after with a styled bench, some hooks. Let me show the next step. So that everything makes sense. Okay, so I'm just moving this out of the way. What we have done below, don't look at this power box. Together we are still going to find a creative way of hiding it and you will be part of the process. And um, so this is the entrance of the flat. We have attached a 100, 114 millimeter piece of pine here. Um, but before I move to the pine, I'm going to show and describe the paneling. So these are pine strips, Nedita. Cover strips. Yeah. Cover strips. So if you go to your hardware store, that is what you ask for. I have used a Rahobi um, jigsaw, something that's easy to use, that you can use. And I've just cut it according to size. The Rahobis come with battery packs. It's easy to use. Um, you don't need to have power, electricity to use them. And Dieter is 100% convinced that sticks like or no more nails will keep the strips here. I will, for safety's sake, seeing that, yeah, seeing that we are going to ring the space out and we are going to have clients in here, I will make sure that I still draw holes, cover them with paintable acrylic silicone. This is what you will use if you want to cover any holes on areas that you know you are going to paint. If it's on wood, you use wood filler. Okay, only on painted areas we'll use the silicone. What I will do is in those areas, I'll apply the silicone. I'll show you how so that it makes sense. Because you don't want to see a gap between the wall and the cover strip. Just gonna do a section like that. Then what I'll do is I'll use my finger, just press it in so that, that there are no gaps. And then a clean wet rag to remove any excess. I'm gonna show. And you wipe away with a rag. Now, next step will be to wait for the silicone to dry. And here we have a lot of deliberation going on. What is the color of the wall going to be? We have options, and I have a few options on the floor. Is it Sheriff Stone? Is it simply Sapiwe? Is it Savvy Steffi? Is it Maestro? I'm not 100% sure, Magical Marina, what it's going to be. I just going with the easiest um, easiest decision now, which is Sheriff Stone. This might change, and you will see it in the end result. And the lovely thing about Choco is you don't need to apply primer on the raw wood. I can now just paint and get the process done easily and quickly. So we are going to wait for the silicone to dry. Let's do it here. And I paint my wall. 
I'd paint my cover strips. Remember, always two coats and allow for the paint to dry in between coats. And of course, you can use a classic roller that's meant for walls on these areas that will be quicker to paint. This is the happy part. To paint, to see the transformation, to be satisfied with what you're busy creating. And the nice thing is, this is paint. You can, in a very cost-effective way, change the color at a later stage as you see the trends change or your interior changes. Um, <laughs> very important, I'm a maverick painter now here, is to always make sure you have drop sheets and cover everything with masking tape. Like I said, our day was um, jam-packed and full of surprises. So just clean up everything. And then I'm going to paint the entire section at the bottom, the strips included in Share of Stone. I have a beautiful vintage, vintage bench that will stand in front of this wall that will just be beautiful. So now we have some excitement at the top and something very subtle happening at the bottom with a paneling that's easy and a quick way of transforming a wall into a focal wall. So if this makes sense, all the strips will be painted. I'll make sure that all the cut lines are perfect. And just for the last bit of inspiration, this is pine. Okay, and you can see that it's very yellow. It, if you look at that section, it doesn't look um, classy. So we do want to tweak the color of the pine a little bit. And for that, I'm going to make use, I'm crawling on the floors, but I just need to get all my equipment. I'm going to use antique brown glaze. Now the antique brown glaze is also such a versatile product and you can use it for paint techniques to create depth in crevices and grooves, but also to stain wood. So I'm opening my jar. I don't want to stir it because I want a very subtle change in color of the pine. I use a damp cloth. Once again, mutton cloth works perfectly, all t-shirts. Anything that we can upcycle. I'm removing my masking tape. Don't get it there. And the first step will be to wet my wood with a damp cloth. So I'm just wiping some water on my timber. The reason for this is you want an even stain on your surface and an even distribution of the color of the antique glaze on the wood. And I'm just going to dip my cloth in the antique glaze. I haven't stirred it. I just want a subtle change. There's colorant in it that sits at the bottom because it's heavier than the rest of the content. And I take my damp cloth and I just wipe the glaze onto my pine. And now remember, we can always make it darker. So once it has dried and you feel the color is too light, it's more easy to just add another coat and make it darker than to sand away and get it lighter if you feel it was done too dark. Okay, now I will stir it because I can see it's really light. Rather safe than sorry. And I add a darker touch to it. Of course, you can always dry brush on top of the pine if you feel 
you certainly want to change the color, make it lighter. Um, we have done tutorials to get that beach look effect where, we, where you will dry brush with something like that, that's maybe a cement gray. But for the look and finish I'm going for, this will be perfect. So no one will know that this was a very cheap, with respect, piece of fine, and I'm changing it to look completely different with a few drops of antique lace. Okay, you can play until you are satisfied with the outcome and what you have achieved. And then a last thing I'm going to add is I'm just going to put these hooks on top of the areas where there are screws that we've drilled into the wall and to hide the screw. So hooks everywhere that we will use a cordless Rahobi um, screwdriver driver and just attach it to the wall. And then, of course, I will make sure all my paintwork is done perfectly and neatly. All the cut lines, everything perfect. And always two coats and allow for the coats to dry. Um, allow for a paint coat to dry before you apply the next. I hope that you are inspired to create a focus piece in your house. And for the next few weeks, you will be part of my journey in revamping a space from top to toe. In Afrikaans, we say, Bani kruinki tori toinki. So if you're not Afrikaans, this is an Afrikaans saying that you can learn for the week. And then I just want to say to every one of you, I had a blast last week in Cape Town. Um, and I met so many amazing people, colorful people, creative people. Um, and I realized how blessed I am to do something that I truly love. I hope that you have found some inspiration today to create color and beauty in your own space and that you will never let any moment pass you by, not to create. Inspiration, so always make sure whoever crosses your path that you give that person inspiration, love, and just true appreciation for the small things in life. Those things that matter the most. Till next week, love to you all. Stay creative. Um, it's the last stretch of the year. We are all tired and exhausted. But I hope that creativity will give you the oomph that you will need to finish this last bit of the year and stay focused. Till next time, love to all. Bye.